changes you can implement so you could, um, hopefully you've all made a resolution to make changes for this year, right? How many of you are going to buy a property this year? Two, three, four, ten, twelve, right? So the idea is you need to look to eliminate what's considered time wasters. So Josh brought me out so we could just talk about how you should, if you're not already, be using technology to save yourself some time and eliminate the tasks that are part of your day that could be um, automated. Uh, managing rental properties, those of you that are holding them, you know it's a tough business. It, it, it's certainly not for the weak of heart. There's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of effort that goes into it. So whenever you can find the things that you can eliminate or simplify, that's what you have to do. We are talking tonight to one of the ladies here. There's not a lot of them. <laughs> uh, to one of the ladies here on you know, how your phone needs to become your office so that you can answer all these questions 24-7. And you need to implement whatever apps work, not just because they're cool and new, but because they make your life easier. Um, one of the things that we talk about is getting the best practices implemented on the way in. So in other words, you need to develop a system so it's more than just a feel for you. How, how do you look for those red flags on the way in? And I work with approximately 700 different uh, rental units across the United States, so not just here in Chicago. And so I get a lot of best practices from listening and learning, not because I've developed them, from listening and learning to what people do. And I always say one of the best ones I have heard in a long time is where they have just an open, open-ended question on their application. Um, hopefully it's almost a pre-application before you've wasted any time on it is just saying, tell me about your last landlord. It, it, it's really, I, I can't make these jokes up. I mean, it's just incredible what people will put in that square. So if you haven't already, just ask them to tell you about their last landlord because it is just such a, a good screening tool for you to find out how people answer that question. So again, a big time saver. may not seem like a big tip, but you will see that once you implement it, <laughs> it can be very helpful. Um, enforcing your rent collection policy. It's one of the things we suggest you're doing up front. That list of charitable organizations, if you're not involved with CIC or Catholic Charities or people in this area that can provide that to you, that needs to be part of your welcome packet. You need to discuss that right up front Here's the list, here's where I suggest you go, so you don't get the call on the 4th of the month or the 5th of the month. Nobody should have been calling you today to give you their New Year's excuse. So you're, you're, you refer back to that document, you give that out, you have it electronically, you can email it out, so you have that available. Um, you can check with your own legal team depending on which county you're in. You can go directly to the bureaus and you can report somebody that's not paid as you know that there are uh, general landlord sites for that as well, but that just helps um, raise the process for all the landlords when that stuff got, does get reported. So find out about that and make sure that you can in your area. Um, you need to make sure that you approach this as a business and you set out those numbers up right up front because that's the other thing is, as we all know, how many times have you gotten a repair call or have you gotten a repair call? Ever on a toilet? Ever? <laughs> I, you just compare that to the total amount of calls you get. That's another thing you could do up front. It go, you know, have a sheet with all your maintenance costs. Give it out up front, so that the day that call comes, you can say, "Did you refer to your maintenance refer your maintenance fee list?" And you go over that list. So have some kind of, of even if it's a basic fee and it doesn't cover your cost, it's a deterrent to those calls, which are time wasters on your part. Um, keep yourself organized by taking advantage of the technology for payments. How many of you are already accepting the Chase Quick Pay? Good, good set of hands. If you're not, you don't have to be a Chase customer. Get on board with that so that you can get that money. ACH debit, um, that's a, something that generally you'll find listed under Treasury Management at your bank. Ask for the Treasury Management. If you've got an LLC, a business account with your bank, to take the rent checks. Uh, there'll be a fee involved for it, but it allows you to take money directly out of their account. You just need to get, they'll usually give you a sample form, 
you can sign them up and then you could take money out on a specific day. If you're in uh, maybe a lower income area where you're working with money orders, there's currency exchanges that you could go develop a relationship with where they'll bring the money to the currency exchange. I'm getting some nods. So, uh, so you go, you know, develop that relationship, especially if you've got a six flat or more in a certain area, and they can bring that cash in. You should not be taking cash. If, if you haven't heard it already, you know, go to a meeting where the Chicago Police Department are there. They'll tell you. You should not be taking cash. You're a target. And let's face it, there's a lot of landlords that just want the money. I mean, it's, it's just the name of the game. It's what happens. So don't set yourself up for a target. Don't take the cash. Send them in for a, a currency exchange. Get that relationship going. There's also, um, I have it looking over there. I can't think of the name of it. There's a dollar store that will also take those payments. I don't think it's Dollar Tree. It's one of the other ones. That's accepting rent payments. So look that up as well. Um, oh, the last one there, I do have landlords, and this really depends on how many you're trying to manage, where they let them go right into the bank. Uh, they give them, it's actually part of their lease. They put the account number right on their lease that this is where you go. If you're doing that, don't make it become, especially those of you that all raised your hand, I'm gonna grow this year. Don't make it become your job to then do the bookkeeping. If you're going to allow them the convenience of making that deposit, it's on them to text you a copy of the receipt. Tell them otherwise if late fees will apply if I don't know about it. Uh, it's not my job to keep track of it. You need to tell me you made the rent. I'm making it as easy as possible for you. Picture of that receipt with their name on it. Text it right over to you. How many of you already are using a free Google Voice for text? Okay, so that should be coming right to your computer. You should be saving those receipts. Those of you that aren't, we'll talk about that. Set up the free Google Voice. You'll get a copy of that receipt at Google Voice. If you're not using it, it could either be to your phone or both, and to your computer and get it on your computer, save the receipts. And what, what we're trying to help you establish is, uh, you know, kind of the digital breadcrumbs, right? So you don't get eaten for lunch. <laughs> so. If you remember, you want to throw those crumbs, you want to have that trail so that if you've got to go into the courtroom, you show as a good, responsible landlord with lots of information already kept, you show you've got good files. Um, making sure you're keeping stuff in a cloud cabinet. Uh, again, there's a variety of options out there. Dropbox, just plain box, iCloud, but use Google's Drive. You should be saving all this so, if you're, again, if you're sitting here at tonight's meeting and something comes up, you can open that lease. You can pull that document. You can see that, you know, if there's a violation to paragraph 30, you can issue that, you know, lease violation. So it just helps everything be right in your pocket. Um, same with your Google Calendar, your iPhone Calendar. Um, if you're using it not just for yourself, it should be for your inspections. You know, let's just say there's uh, some of you are in the small uh, other counties outside of Cook County. If there's uh, just an annual inspection by your particular municipality and it comes up at a certain time, you can stick it in your calendar and give it right to your resident as the reminder 30 days before. So it reminds both of you that there will be an inspection you know, on January 23rd and we need to have an adult 18 year old or present. Could all be right in the calendar, it could all go right out. And it allows you to again, keep organized, save time. You don't have to worry about missing that inspection. Now they're fining. How many of you have seen that they're, they've now added fines? Excuse me. Well, they are. <laughs> I didn't see any show of hands there. Well, trust me, they are. I just got a new um, cost sheet from Round Lake Beach. Mm -hmm. Everything's not only gone up on the annual inspections, all the fines are going up. First time this, second time this, for reschedules. So everybody needs money. If you don't know it, you're in the state that needs money. <laughs> that includes every municipality and every county. So there will be more and more fines. So you've got to stay more and more organized so you don't end up taking that hit. Uh, we've got the Google Voice, uh, Google Translate. How many of you are using that already? It's really, really super helpful. Uh, I mean, there's over 50 different languages. Uh, you know, some of you may have heard my story already where I had someone that kept, I uh, didn't understand, didn't understand, so I sent it to him in Chinese. 
So I was pretty confident. Well, he wrote back immediately, I am not Chinese. Well, <laughs> he found the English language very uh, capably and told me he was Korean. And guess what? Just looked up Korean and got the message right back now. He now speaks English. So, <laughs> so it, it helps to take away the excuses. Eliminate the excuses and keep everybody on board. Um, same thing with the text, we just talked about making sure that if you don't know the statistic already, 99% of the people will open your text. Everybody in marketing knows that. Get those texts out there. As we discussed, 45% uh, of the emails are now opened on a phone. So it used to be a barrier that a new tenant would tell you, I don't have an email. They have to have an email for doctors, for schools, if they're registering kids for school, they have an email. So get those emails so you can send out the documents and save money on renewals, et cetera, leases. Uh, making sure you take pictures. Remember this one. I've got another good story on this one. This one will backfire. Keep in mind um, that those pictures can be taken of you. I've had some angry, angry landlords during evictions pounding on doors. And they say, you've got to keep calm because if they've got a camera going, you're in trouble. So keep it, keep it both ways. Document issues, document maintenance, but keep your calm because anybody could be taking a picture of you as the landlord. And I know things get escalated and frustrated, but keep in mind, do I want this on the front page of the news, you know? So, all right, um, make sure you're considering additional fees, appliance fees, washer, dryers, they're, they're charging for this stuff now. Storage fees, monthly pet fees, I think most of you already are doing the monthly pet fees. Um, you could be charging extra for the payday plans. If you haven't done that already, you could be charging for the 13th month. So if you go payday, remember, it is an extra bookkeeping cost to you, just the way you get charged fees for things. You, you know, It's become commonplace to say, hey, we have this, but you have to pay extra. So make sure you're compensating yourself for doing the extra work. Uh, TV rentals even. I've, got, I've heard stories of where they're buying, you know, TVs, landlords on the day after, you know, getting those uh, Black Friday deals, and then they're sending a rent, you want to keep this big screen, you know, $30 per month. So they're making money on the TV. So, you know, remember that people are used to, how many of you tenants have used a rent-a-center for furniture? I mean, if that's happening, you could be that rent-a-center. It's an income source for you. So when you see those opportunities, make sure you're, pro you're the provider. Um, these are the helpful sites. Josh and I were talking about these are some very helpful ones. That Fiverr is one I just used recently for a commercial. They'll do video. They'll do voiceovers. They'll write your scripts. Uh, the RentFax Pro. The Batch Geo was a big one. That one allows you to like kind of... Um, What's the word route, you know, like you would route your delivery person for a day, like a FedEx would do with their trucks. That would allow you to route your maintenance, those of you with multiple single-family homes. If you knew that a repairman had to go to certain, you know, five stops, make sure those are five efficient stops and they're routed correctly so that you're not going back and forth. Um, website ads. That Rently, I don't know if anybody's using that. That's a helpful one for those of you who don't like to show your own property. That gives like a digital passcode for like 60 sec, uh, not 60 seconds, 60 minutes. And so if the person doesn't show up, so you, you can ask for the IDs. And by the way, that you should be doing, it even uh, hopefully you all are, but some of you are showing the house to anybody, you should have a picture of that ID before you meet them that's on file that should be sent to you and somebody you know to protect yourself at this point. So make sure you're asking for a, a picture of that driver's license texted to you. So that Rently gives them a code, allows them to go in, go out, tell you what they thought of the property without you having to meet them there. Uh, what else do we have here? <laughs> Another uh, service for sending and receiving texts for those of you that are trying to lease apartments, it allows you to blast, let's say, your marketing list of you know 600 people that want to know when you have an apartment up uh, the document hub allowing you to edit and sign your PDFs. So those of you that, again, with the sign for lease, there's the e-signatures. Uh, the Pixlr is helpful for the photo editing. 
what else do we have? The auction websites, for those of you looking, that need help paying bills. That's a helpful one. You can go there as a great source. You can put in your county. That's that tool we were talking about to make sure you provide that right up front. Don't wait until there's a problem. Get that out up front. Am I almost out of time here? If, you're, if your portfolio is really large, there is some great uh, web-based software that will help you stay organized where you can put in the autos, the license plates, all that stuff. And remember, the more data you're keeping in those, the more queries you can put together. You know, when uh, The really good landlords, they know when the vacancies are. They've got the renewal letters out 60 days ahead of time. They're not losing a day. They're for sure not losing a month. They're not losing a day when possible. They, somebody moves out the 31st, the first person's coming in the 1st. you got to get it down to that. So you're doing that maintenance that last month they're there, and you're keeping track of it so you don't lose a month's rent. That's just too critical. At Folio, PropertyWare, Property Manager Cloud, those are all web-based softwares. I have been working with web-based software since, like, 1999. Uh, I know a lot of people don't believe it was out there, but it was. <laughs> And so it's like you just got to go that route so that you've got it available to you. And I think everybody's gained that comfort. And lastly, of course, get it, you recognize that group, I hope. Uh, get involved with continuing education. Just the most important thing you could do is pick up those tips. Somebody will tell you, I tried this software, that software. They're going to tell you what's working, what's not working, and keep you abreast on those laws. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff.